Hello losers, welcome to my liquor store. I got some candy. Of course I had to get some of this for my michelada. Oh, I killed this one, I only have two left. But I got peach rings, stole two limes from my neighbors. Some sour warheads. I just have to pick up the whole thing because this is my favorite candy, y'all. Watermelon lollipop with powder, chili powder. I got my pork skin. This is my first time trying this brand, but we'll see together. Uh, and then of course, ramen because that is my meal today. Michelada and my beer. Tahin, just in case I need more. Let's get started. Uh, we're gonna make a liquor store charcuterie. This is good. Before we do that, we have to cook our ramen. <coughs> Alrighty. Make sure it's still attached. Just like that. Two of these. Man, my charcuterie sucks. <laughs> Why is it stuck like this? Is it old? I'm still gonna eat it. Thank you, neighbors. I'm sorry. Nobody needs that much limes, dude. They're probably thanking me right now. One more. And then I'm just gonna drop that in. Yes, I washed it. No, I didn't. Don't know what kind of beer this is, I just... Picked it up. Then we top it off with one of these. Oh yes, okay. So I'm gonna be talking about the time I got cheated on. I've talked about it before on the podcast. I've talked about it on other people's podcasts as well, but I don't think that I told people the full story only because I thought that I would be um, incriminating myself. So everything I say is alleged, okay? It wasn't even that bad. We'll see what you guys think. Basically what had happened was, is that I met this guy, okay, through Hinge. The reason why I went on Hinge was because I had just gotten the gym pass. And I realized after going like two times, I was like, I hate the gym. Well, I've always hated the gym, but the fact that I had to go alone all the time, it was like, it was just, I was like, why? Maybe mukbang was a bad idea to tell a story on. Wow. I was like, why don't I just go on Hinge, try to meet girls or guys to go to the gym with, right? On my profile, I just wrote, not looking for anything, just looking for a gym buddy, for real. On my description, I was just like, basically like, you will be gymming for free. Uh, I will spot you, you spot me, and we just get fit together. All the guys that I met on there, they were like pretty boring. So all we did was gym. And after one gym session, I didn't see them again. And then I came across this guy. Let's call him Bob, because it's easy to remember. Bob and I, we matched. And he was like, damn, I don't really care to go to the gym, but I'm down. So I gym really, really late at night. At the time, I was a bartender. So like, I kind of got off work late. And so literally, I was gymming at like 11, 12, 1, maybe 2. It really depends. None of my friends wanted to work out with me at that time because they just had to sleep. So no, nobody wants to go, right? So that's why I, I turned to Hinge. This guy, Bob, he was very, very charming. Like he was this nerdy, like nerdy, like shy boy. But he was very, very funny. And so like I was like, damn. Maybe aside from the gym, we could actually be friends. So I started talking to him, like starting conversation. And we both had like very similar interests. He also hated the gym. He loved drinking. And he loved to eat, okay? Again, that he was very funny. We decided to hang out. And like we basically just like established a friendship there. And like there was nothing more than a friendship. Like I didn't find him attractive. Um... 
in in the beginning but like as we got to like know each other more and we were hanging out like three to like four times a week so like we had gotten really really close okay and so because he was just a friend i had no problem introducing him to my friends so when my friends saw him low-key they thought he was gay y'all this man was fruity so my friend they loved him they were super comfortable with him off the bat especially because he was like funny and nice so like we all hung out he would come to literally all my friends events like hangouts and stuff so we were all like one big happy group and then one day i threw a barbecue at my house and mind you this was like two months of knowing him and we did not do anything but we had not hooked up we had not even we never even held hands we never even kissed whatever right but one day guys at my barbecue um he got drunk and he was uh, we went back into my room and we were talking and then um yeah things just happened we just started kissing making out and stuff and then yeah it happened even after that happened we felt really comfortable with each other so i was just like damn like i'm starting to like this guy we continued to hang out like three to four times a week and that's a lot y'all one day he was like hey my family is coming to town i'm gonna be busy for like a week and a half to two weeks so i was like oh okay you know what like just i, I all i wanted from him was him to have fun but also like text me here and there so like i know he's cool i get anxious i want i want to text here and there so when his family came like he said he wasn't messaging me back he's usually so good and at answering text messages but this time he wasn't answering me for like hours and i don't mean like two hours three hours he didn't respond to me for like like seven hours and i was like what the fuck there's no way that you are with your family like for that long and you have no time to text like what happened did your like family take away your phone and say like oh sorry like this is family time like what the fuck you're like 29 anyways y'all i was getting very anxious and because of that you guys i feel so embarrassed but because of that i was just like starting to get nervous and i was like fuck he had asked me out before and I said no. I was like, maybe now I should ask him to be my boyfriend. And when I said that, he was like, yes. So we were together. When he came back, you know, he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I couldn't text you. Like, honestly, like they, we were like, we were on a very, very busy schedule, whatever. And they went on trips and whatnot okay whatever one day we went to a korean bar uh with my friends and then i think my friend asked him a question and he answered in a sus way right it it, it, it made me think i was like hmm that's a little weird and mind you guys i just thought he was like the most innocent guy ever like uh, when we met he told me that he doesn't have an instagram he was like i mean i do have an instagram but i'm not really huge on social so like you can add me but like i don't post anything and i was like all right, whatever. I don't want to follow someone who doesn't who doesn't post. And I believed him, you know? And I also liked the fact that he didn't have an Instagram because I had bad experience with my ex. And then on top of that, all he did was work and go home. He just made me feel very, very secure. Um, he looked super innocent. He looked like he couldn't hurt a fly. Like he looked like he couldn't even like lie to me. And then like we were hanging out all the time. He was giving me all of his time. So like there was nothing to doubt him about and i know this already sounds very sus to you guys but i never saw his friends i never saw his friends because he told me that they all live far away and the ones that do live close they were married and had kids i believed him because i was like he never hangs out with his friends so i'm just assuming that yeah they are busy later on that night i think the sus thing that he said to my friend was had something to do with his ex-girlfriend and from what i know is that he dated this girl 
for a long time for like years but they broke up two years ago so yeah something it had something to do with his ex that rubbed me the wrong way i was like hmm sounds like a lie but i have no no reason to doubt him right when we went back home i think that i kind of like egged him on to like show me a picture of his ex i was drunk and stupid y'all and i'm nosy anyway so and he wouldn't show me he was like why honestly it's over with i probably don't even have any pictures of her that night he slept over and he, he got a call and but he was like knocked out right and it just kept ringing and ringing and i picked it up and it was from someone like that said my love and i was like hmm Bob, who is your love other than me? I was like, I need to break into his phone. And I didn't know his password. But I was like, most men are dumb as fuck. It's probably their birthday. Put his birthday in. Unlock. Allegedly went through his phone. Anyway, so I got into his phone. I don't know why. The, the first thing I did was go to his Instagram to see whether or not he was lying about him not having an Instagram and like not being active. So I, so I go on it and I'm just like, okay, he has an Instagram. It's logged in, but he's right. He's not active. There's no pictures, whatever. Uh, and then I go to his text messages and I'm like looking at his text messages. All it is, is his friends work. And that was basically it. I decided to go into his photos. <laughs> And the most recent photos were of me that he saved. When I went up a little more, there, there was pictures of this girl, this very like cutesy like Korean girl. And I was like, this must be his ex. And the thing, the, the thing was that the pictures, <laughs> the pictures were pretty recent. By recent, I mean like weeks ago. And now that I, I'm realizing, I'm just like, he says she's from Korea and they broke up two years ago, but why are the pictures recent? So I went on his cacao talk. <laughs> the first person that he was chatting with is something like my cutie or something. So I click on that and I'm just like, damn, I've been played. That is his actual girlfriend from Korea. And I just read their whole text messages and they're very like, they're very cutesy to each other. They've been together for a long ass time. And the way that they were talking, they know each other's parents. Like, it, they're like close. Like, they're very, very close. And then I was like, damn, how should I bring this up? To my advantage, um, there was like this, there was a picture of him and her. And it was like a, like a, like a, like an album. I mean, it was, it was like an app. So I clicked on that and that shit immediately called her. So now I know that that was like a shortcut on, he, he made a shortcut so then he could press that and it'll immediately call her. I was like, oh shit. Like in the, at that time I was like, oh my God, I fucked up, I called her. Now, now like it's gonna look sus, right? But once I called her, I immediately ended the call. But once I ended the call, she called right back, literally right back. Because at the time, while it was, time for us to sleep in korea it was morning time so she answered that shit so fast and then i was like oh shit it's ringing and i'm just like okay what i'm gonna do is wake his ass up and ask him who the fuck is my cutie okay so i woke him up and i was like bob who the fuck is my cutie right and i showed it to him he was like oh what who's that and i was like don't fucking play stupid with me. He literally for the longest time just like sat there like, like a dumbass. I just kept asking him questions and stuff and I was like, Esther, what, what should we do? So what I really wanted from him was for him to hit her up, tell him that he cheated on her and show her proof because I felt bad for this girl. She deserves to know. And I was like, do it in front of me so that I know that you actually did it. And he was like, I can't do it. Like, I, I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do it. And I was like, damn, this motherfucker won't budge. So I was like, okay, well, 
if you aren't gonna tell her, then I will. And he was like, how are you gonna tell her? You don't even have her info. Okay, her phone number, her address in Korea, and her social media. I was like, boy, please, I am a detective. I will find her in two seconds. And he still doesn't know I was looking through his phone. Allegedly. I was like, yeah, I even know her name. And I said her name. And then that's when he was just like, what the fuck? Who are you? And then he was like, please don't tell her. Please allow me to tell her. And I was like, oh, now you want to tell her. I was like, this is bullshit. I do not trust you. If I give you the chance to tell her when you're at home, you're not going to do it. You think I'm you think I'm four? So I was like, no, you do it now or I do it. And he was just like, please, please, please. And he was like begging me. And I was like, okay, well, if you don't want me to tell her, give me ten thousand dollars. I only asked for that much because I was hoping that he would tell her. Come on, man, like you're really gonna give up ten thousand dollars to to me, so I don't say anything, you know what I mean? So I just thought it was weird. I was, he had the audacity to try to haggle with me. He was like, I don't have $10,000. I was like, okay, well then I guess you gotta tell her. He, he sat there and thought and he was like, can we do five? Can we do five? Why was this guy trying to haggle with me, right? I was like, no. I was like, what the heck, no, $10,000? Or you got to tell her right here in front of me before I tell her. It's like, okay, I'll give you $10,000. I was like shocked. I was like, did I just come up $10,000? The thing is, guys, he's not rich. He's not rich at all. He makes about like $60,000 a year, which is not a little, but you know, like not enough to give me $10,000, dude. He was like, can I do payment plan? And, you know, I was like, this man may not give me the money and I will lose either way, right? So I was like, okay, well, let's come up with a contract. So I called my lawyer. We've been talking for like hours, right? So like by the time that I called up my lawyer, it was about like 7 to 8 a.m. So y'all, I called my lawyer up and I was like, Yo, I'm in a weird ass situation. I need, like I basically like gave him the, the you know, what is it, the 401? And I was like, yeah, so I need to come up with a contract. And this man was like, man, just write whatever the heck, right? And so he basically like, we just, we just made up some random shit. That's not even, I don't even know how valid this contract is. It's probably not valid. But anyways, we just basically, <laughs> I hand wrote the contract on a COVID waiver, y'all. This contract just stated like, basically like setting up the payment plan. If he was late on his payments or if he didn't pay me the $10,000, um, I would take his car as collateral. And this man was like, okay, well, if I do give you $10,000, you have to write on this contract that your friends or family cannot harass me or um, damage any of my uh, properties or belongings. And I was like, whatever, man. So we, he signed it, I signed it. And yeah, that happened. And then I let him go. Honestly, guys, I know that the right thing to do was to tell her, but I really did want her to hear from him. And on top of that, dude, reading their text messages, I realized that they are very like closely bounded together. Like, his family knew her family and they were just like intertwined. And I was just like, damn, I feel like low key, even if I did reach out to her, first of all, she wouldn't believe me. Second of all, they would have still stayed together or whatever. I was like, man, I'd be losing. And that's how I came up $10,000. Follow me for more tips. Mm. This is getting saucy. Not the story, the, the Michelada. So when he came for his first payment, he dropped off cash because that's what I wanted from him. And when I opened the, the mail, he had also written a three, uh, it's basically like one, two, two page long letter. You guys can skip this part if you don't want to hear it, but <clears throat> 
Hello, Esther. Sorry. Sorry for lying. Sorry for deceiving. Sorry for being a hypocrite. Sorry for wasting your time. This can go on, but I hate to waste any more of your time. I understand my words hold no weight, so this letter might be in vain, but it would mean so much if you heard me out this one time. I have been doing a lot of reflecting these last few days, and I'm ready to answer your question as to why I did what I did. For once, I will be... <laughs> For once, I will be genuine with you. This past year has been very difficult for me. Even though I was constantly around people, friends, and family, where were your friends? I felt alone. It was a bit nerve-wracking. Spending time with friends and family did nothing to relieve that. Desperate for something new, I turned to dating apps. However, it was all the same. Nothing. I felt nothing. By chance, you hit me with, do you gym? As you know... Um, I didn't want to go. It was late and way past my bedtime, but you were persistent. Um, either I get catfished and get to work out or work out with a pretty girl. Unfortunately, it was the former, but I did get a good workout in. Just kidding. Motherfucker had time to put in a joke there, y'all. I was hooked. It's gonna sound corny, but you were like a ray of sunshine in my life and look forward to seeing you more. That's why I agreed every every time you invited me out. And the more time I spent with you, the more my feelings for you developed. I couldn't get enough. I never intended to let it get as far as it did, but having you in my life got me out of my funk. It broke that cycle of going to work and back home that, were, that I was so accustomed to. I was blind and never considered how stupid, shameless, and disgusting my actions were simply because I was happy. So basically, he went on like apologizing to me, apologizing to my friend. You were nothing but kind, caring, generous, and loving towards me, and um, I had nothing to show for it on my end. Um, blah, blah, blah. He just said, I can't say sorry enough. Blah, 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 blah. Please don't take this as my plea for forgiveness, nor do I ask you to try and understand my actions. I do not deserve it. I wouldn't hold it against you if you felt that I was once again lying to you. I have been very selfish in asking you to do either would just be another selfish act on my end. I just hope that you know that I deeply regret my actions and I'm truly sorry. Let me know what you guys would do in the comments down below. You guys, so I missed a huge portion of the story. Remember when I told you that his family came? His family came and he was gonna be busy for like one to two weeks. He was busy because she was visiting. <laughs> His girlfriend, his actual girlfriend, was visiting and this is why it took him hours and hours to respond. Because he didn't want to get caught. And there's another thing that I found out after. Him and his girlfriend had a couple Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'm not proud of what I did in this, in this story, but I just thought it was a funny one. So, don't do what I did, y'all. Stay safe. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>